Aloha and good morning. Welcome to all of our visitors. Let me tell you, you are an encouragement to us, choosing to be with us on the first Sunday of the year, choosing to be here instead of elsewhere on our wonderful island. Thank you for encouraging us by putting God first, worshiping with God's family here in Honolulu. Happy New Year to our family here in Honolulu. Uh, all of you here in the building and all of you uh, who are Zooming in, Seven days in, I hope you're holding fast to your New Year's resolution. If not, there are plenty Mondays left of the year. So you know how that goes. You can always start on a Monday. Second Timothy 3 and verse 16 and 17 says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is profitable for our doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God or woman of God, and the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly equipped unto every good work. In verse 15, Timothy was told that he was brought up in the Holy Scriptures that made him wise unto salvation. We've come to the portion of our worship where we hear from the word of God. And I want you to open your Bible to the book of Haggai. Open your Bibles there to Haggai. Chapter 1 is where the sermon will come this morning. 931 B.C. is when the kingdom of Israel was divided. 931 B.C. The kingdom was divided. Then you had the northern kingdom, often called the kingdom of Samaria, the northern kingdom. And then that of Judah. Ten tribes make up the northern kingdom Two tribes, Judah and Benjamin, made the southern kingdom. In 721 BC or 722, whichever you view, it's an approximate time frame. In 721 BC, the northern kingdom was sent away in destruction. The Assyrian Empire, who was a world power of the day, very vicious empire. They marched down to uh, Samaria and took captive the Jews of the kingdom in the north. The southern kingdom was warned, don't be like your sister in the north. Don't go after the false gods in the north. But in uh, 606, BC beginning the Babylonians was world power at this time the Babylonians conquered you know the areas and their march towards Palestine eventually they were knocking at the walls of Jerusalem the walls were destroyed by 586 BC the temple of God that was built by Solomon we will never know of the glory of that temple the temple of God that was built by Solomon was destroyed. All the gold, all the richness that was in that temple carried away into Babylon captivity. Jeremiah was the prophet of zero hour, meaning he was the prophet to warn Israel before it happened. And he kind of lived through it as well, along with Isaiah and others. But Jeremiah warned he warned that there will be a captivity of 70 years if Israel or the southern kingdom did not obey God and they did not obey God. And so the Babylonians took them captive for 70 years. Now, you probably heard of this song by the rivers of Babylon. There we sat down and there we wept. That is not just the reggae song. Those are the words from the scriptures. Those are the words of the Jews away in Babylon who mourn. Worshiping God back in the temple, being with God's people, having the avenue to God through the high priest of old. Captivity was rough for God's people. They ate things that you don't normally eat. Let me just say that, right? Because we got potluck after. 
But God's people uh, suffered, and a 70 years of captivity finally came to an end under the Medo-Persian uh, Empire. Uh, this time, the, the Persians were of the world power. We're following secular history too, not just biblical history. It, it all lines up. The word of God is true. The Medo-Persian led by Cyrus, king of Persia. Cyrus was a very weird king compared to the different world powers before him in that he captive these uh, 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 prisoners of war and then he would release all of them to go back to their lands and to rebuild their home places. And so you will read about that in the book of Ezra chapter 1 verse 1 and verse 2 we'll read it here in our lesson. But the book of Haggai, all of that to tell you, the book of Haggai, Haggai was one of the prophets who returned with Israel. And this short two chapter book of Haggai the prophet talks about misplaced priority. So happy new years. Everyone in the new year, we're all thinking of what, do I, what I wanna do this year how I can improve this year. There's some lessons and some strong reminders from Haggai's message to God's people that are good and applicable for us God's people today. Open your Bible there as I read from the word of God, Haggai chapter one. In the second year of King Darius, in the sixth month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came to Haggai the prophet, to Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua the son of Jehoshaphat, the high priest, saying, Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, This people says, The time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses? and this temple to lie in ruins? Now therefore, says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but you do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountains and bring wood and build the temple that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. You look for much, but indeed it came to little. And when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why, says the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is in ruins, while every one of you runs to his own house. Therefore the heavens above you withhold the dew, and the earth withholds its fruit. For I called for a drought on the land and the mountains, on the grain and on the new wine and the oil, on whatever the ground brings forth, on men and livestock, and on all the labor of your hands. Then Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel and Joshua the son of Jehoshadak, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people obey the voice of the Lord their God and the words of Haggai the prophet as the Lord their God has sent him. And the people feared the presence of the Lord. Then Haggai the Lord's messenger spoke the Lord's message to the people saying, I am with you says the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel and the son of Shealtiel, the governor of Judah and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehoshadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and worked on the house of the Lord of hosts, their God, on the 24th day of the sixth month in the second year of King Darius. So Haggai with a message to God's people, the people that were instructed at five, somewhere around 536 BC was the first return. They were instructed by King Cyrus, go back and build the house of the Lord your God. 
The message of Haggai dates to around 520 BC. 16 years have gone by. And all that was there concerning the temple of the Lord was the foundation. And Israel is living it up in their paneled houses, meaning luxurious living, nice houses. If you had the duty to build God's house, what would be the condition of it 16 years later? Would it be finished? Would it be unfinished? Or what would be your standing uh, to modernize it uh, financially 16 years later? What would be your standing? Kind of look at yourself, well, this is the span of my life. In the past 16 years, this is how I have increased by God's grace. But what about God's house? What about God's church, which is the house of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth? Several thoughts, as the sermon is titled, Consider Your Ways. And I'm not saying to you consider your ways, I'm saying to us consider our ways. If we don't, I want to highlight some of the things that are in the text of Haggai. If we do not, number one, if we do not consider our ways, we can become complacent in obeying God's will. Complacent household. We we can get to the point where Israel was to find ways to justify not doing what God said to do. Haggai chapter 1, verse 2 and 5, 2 through 5 again. Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, This people says the time has not come. But you were commanded to do this. But you were commanded by King Cyrus to do this. How is it that 16 years later, approximately, you are still saying the time has not come? This people say the time has not come. That the Lord's house should be built. And the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet saying, Is it time for yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses? And this temple lie in ruins. Now therefore, thus says the Lord, the time of our sermon, consider your ways. It's very possible to be complacent in regards to obeying God's word. I imagine there are probably times last year where we decided to, you know, not put God first and do some other thing instead of putting him first. That can lead to spiritual complacency. It is a compromise for a time, but you keep doing it. You will become complacent. You will find ways to justify not doing what God said, just like the Israelites did. All right, I know we sometimes are hard on the Israelites, but they are much like we are. We are much like they are. 16 years later, can you believe that? Right, it happens. Here's the command uh, from Cyrus in Ezra chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. Thus says King Cyrus of Persia, of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord God of heaven has given me, and he has commanded me to build him a house at Jerusalem which is in Judah, who is among you of all his people? May his God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah and build the house of the Lord God of Israel, which which is in Jerusalem. 16 years later, it's not done. We can become complacent, just like they did. Number two, if we do not consider our ways, Our labor can be in vain. Whatever our hands do, waste of time if God's not first in our lives. And your hands can do a lot of good things. But it would be a waste of time if God is not first in our lives. Notice here again in the text, 
Verse 6 and 7, you have sown much, but bring in little. You eat, but do not have enough. When we eat, I hope we have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but you not, no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into bags with holes. Sometimes I feel like that's Hawaii living, right? There's bag with holes. So expensive here. But you get the point, right? Their labor is in vain. They sown is not enough. They eat is not enough. They clothe themselves is not enough. All the money they earn into, you know, a bottomless pit. Again, the title of our sermon, Consider Your Ways. To serve the Lord is the greatest thing anyone can do in their life. But to make that go in vain, that would be the greatest tragedy. To be here on Sunday and on Wednesday night, if you come Wednesday night, but to be here for the Lord only one day a week and the rest of the week we're not serving the Lord. What a tragedy that is. Being with God is every day. Laboring with God is every day. We must put him first if the work of our hands are going to count. You want to make it count, put God first in your life. Israel, none of that counted until they build the house of the Lord as they were commanded. I want us this year to labor hard for the Lord putting him first, understanding that if you do it for the Lord, it's not in vain. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, unless he's second place in your life. And it wouldn't matter. I'll tell you right now, it's, it's sad, but it's truth. There are a lot of people gathering in churches today that are gathering in churches in vain because they have not put God first in their lives. How do I put God first in my life? Obey his commands. And as simple as that. Obey him. That's how we do it. Obey him. Number three. If we do not consider our ways, God will not bless us. Now, you can have a good job still. Now, you can still make money. Now, you can be like Elon Musk. You can have all the money in the world, but you are not blessed by God. What do we mean when we say God will not bless us? It's a spiritual blessing. It's a spiritual state. It's having access to all the spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus, Ephesians 1 and verse 3. It's not sometimes we think that I've been blessed by God because of all this material. There are rich, lost people in this world. Being blessed is not material, gaining material. Being blessed is regardless of the troubles you go through in life, you have peace, you have joy, you have people that love you people you love. You have a God who is with you regardless of the circumstances. That is being blessed. And if I don't put God first, that will be tossed about by the storms of life. Notice the Israelites here in Haggai, by not building his temple and living in their own houses, finished houses, the Bible says this, God commands them, go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the temple that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. You look for much, but indeed came to little. And when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why, says the Lord? Because my house that is in ruins, while every one of you runs to his own house. You are not blessed because I'm second. You are not blessed because you have not done what I've commended you, is what God is saying. Therefore, 
because you disobey. Therefore, the heavens above you withhold the dew, and the earth withholds its fruit. Believe it or not, it can impact you physically as well. All right? Not putting God first can, can take away some of your physical blessings. For I call for a drought on the land and the mountains on the green and the new wine and the oil and whatever the ground brings forth on men and livestock. Reminds you of Deuteronomy 28, doesn't it? Um, do that, give that to you as a homework. Read Deuteronomy 28 for the sake of our time. Deuteronomy 28 begins from verse 1 and onward. It says, if you will obey me, blessed shall you be in the city and out of the city. Blessed shall be the food of your womb. Blessed shall be the, the work of your hands. Blessed shall be everything that you do. You go in and out. God will bless you when you obey him. And then in that same chapter, somewhere around verse 14 and 15, if you do not obey the voice of the Lord, you will be cursed. It's important that when you're going through some challenges, do think this way. Did I do something against my God? You need to think that way. All right? Maybe you got sick. Right? I'm not saying sin is, is, or sickness and tragedy is, is a result of sin always. It's not always the, 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 the case, but don't count it out. That may just be God telling you, wake up. This is why you didn't get promoted. This is why you didn't get that job. This is why you're sick. This is why you're dealing with a lot of internal battles. You got to ask yourself, am I obeying God? I want you to know this is the secret to life. Matthew 6, 33. This is the secret to life. This is how you become successful. Those of you who will not seek first, you're not ready for the adding. You are not ready for the adding if you are not seeking first. Many of us, we want the addition. We want the, the, the blessings, but we will not work for it, right? We will not put in the work. Here's the word. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And here's what happened. This is a promise. And all these things shall be added unto you. You seek first, you get the adding. But you're not ready to receive the adding if you're not seeking first God's kingdom. That's why there's a lot of problems that we often deal with as Christians. It's not just that this is a sin sick world. It's often because we don't seek him first. Put him first. Last but not least, church. If we want God's blessing, I've said this already. We need to obey God's word. Look at what God's people did here in verse 12 and verse 13. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Joshua, the son of Jehoshadak, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people. I'm going to pause there. From the governor to the priest and then to everyone. There's all of God's people involved here. With all the remnant of God, people obey the voice of the Lord. You love me, Jesus said. Keep my commandments. That's the secret to success in life. Obey the voice of the Lord. Obey the voice of the Lord and the words of Haggai the prophet as the Lord their God had sent him. And the people feared the presence of the Lord this year. Let's tremble before our God, shall we? Sometimes I do wonder if we fear the Lord. That means to respect the Lord. But then the, the other side too, the one that we should be truly concerned about as well, 
We should be afraid of the Lord. The Bible says our God is a consuming fire. If you do not obey, be afraid of that consuming fire. If you do obey, fear and respect who he is as our almighty God. I love verse 13. When you obey the word of the Lord, you will be blessed. One of God's greatest blessing and promises to us is that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Uh, verse 13, there then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, spoke the Lord's message to the people saying, I am with you always. Or I am, uh, I am with you, says the Lord. We're building God's house this year. The Lord's church, we do it every year. And every year, we should see improvement in the Lord's house. Because we are commanded to seek him first and his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto us. Let us consider our ways. As we have received reminders from the word of God in Haggai. Let us consider our ways so that we do not become complacent in obeying God's commandments. Away with justifying ourselves. Away with the excuses to say, this is why I can't come. Or this is why I don't do this. This is why, away with that. God has commanded us to serve him. Serve him. Let's not be complacent. Let's consider our ways so that we do not labor in vain. I don't know about you, but I don't like wasting my time, wasting my energy, wasting my efforts. You shouldn't like that either, all right? And one of the ways we can waste our time, our efforts, our energy, is by doing things without our heart in it, by doing things without God first in our lives. Last but not least, let us consider our ways so that God will bless us as we obey his will. We want to be blessed by God's grace this year. To start off, we do need to sit and consider our ways. Are you a Christian? If you're not a Christian, consider your ways. You can do these things and become a Christian right here this morning. Hear the word of God because faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God, Romans 10, verse 17. Believe that Jesus is the son of God, John 3, and verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Repent of all your sins. Jesus said, except you repent, you will likewise perish. Luke 13 and verse 3. Confess he is the son of God, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10, 10. And then you be baptized. Once you say, I believe Jesus is the son of God, be baptized, washing away your sins, just like those you read about in the book of Acts, where Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins. And then you be faithful to God each day, bearing your cross daily. Jesus said, if anyone wants to follow after me, let him take up his cross daily and follow after me. We're going to sing a song of encouragement. If you need prayers, if you need to do those things this morning, I invite you to come forward as we stand and sing.